today we bring you a very special show. We have been getting many comments online about the Forever Home. We'll be spending some time talking about some of our favorite features, but also the process behind the scenes, how the home came to be what it is today. This is a very special home. We've got the tour coming out soon. That'll be released within the next four weeks. So be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already. You don't want to miss that. It's just absolutely amazing. Now, with that in mind too, speaking of amazing, there are new ideas coming out all the time. And when you're building a brand new custom luxury home, you want to make sure you are on the forefront of all the new cutting edge technology, great ideas that you can incorporate into your home. Therefore, we are announcing that we have a brand new podcast being released and it is called The New Home Show. So be sure to search for The New Home Show podcast and stay tuned for many great episodes that will be coming out in the future. Let's get started today with talking about the process, the behind the scenes. And this is just more broad strokes for everyone who's interested in building a custom home with Golden Eagle. Justin, as a sales advisor, you're oftentimes fielding the phone calls and you're the first point of contact for our clients. So how does it all begin? I mean, typically people are either calling in or sending a, an email in um, and, and everybody's at a different stage and where they're at. Some people own land, um, some people do not. Some people have never built a home before. Some people have been through a home building process before. So, um, you know, we got to ask a lot of questions about where, where they're actually at in that stage, because you know, if they own land, I mean, we're going to have to design the home to that property. Um, if they don't own land yet, um, it's something that uh, may take a little bit longer to, to start that design process because we want to make sure we're optimizing, optimizing the design of that home to that property. So um, so that, that's really the first step is finding out where exactly they are in that stage. Um, and then, you know, we like to, to determine some sort of budget set sort of, of, of um a budget with that client to make sure that we're going to start off on the right foot. Um, you know, every, like I said, uh, their budget may include the land or may not, depending on if they own that. Uh, so definitely um, figuring out uh, where they want to be. And uh, it could be, you know, a, a wide variety. You know, we're, we're, we're building homes from 700000 up to 10, you know, $12 million. So it doesn't matter to me where you are on that spectrum, um, but uh, it's going to definitely help speed up that process of trying to figure out where you want to be. And there's going to be a lot of things that are going to determine that budget, size of home, the amenities you put in that home, the property, where it's being built. Um, so that's really, really one of the first big steps is determining a budget. Give them a ballpark price and on, you know, whether it's a square foot price or maybe they found a plan that they like. Um, so really just um, starting them off with a ballpark price. And then if that fits where they want to be, um, moving in that, into that design process. You know, that's really the next step, step two of our design process. And let's spend some time on that. Mike, as the design and engineering manager, how does the land dictate how the home is designed and how does that design process work? So the land does dictate, um, you know, how that house is going to lay out. Um, you could be building here in Wisconsin and Kansas, you know, where the, you have a lot of flat lots where you don't have a lot of, you know, topography. You could also be building in Colorado on the side of a mountain where you are going to have a lot more uh, you know, steep terrain features. And what we do then is we look at how the house is going to sit on there and make suggestions on what they can do to make it fit the topography better uh, versus, you know, you may have the house or I'm sorry, the garage, um, you know, approach. And then the house may actually step down as it works its way down uh, in, you know, the plateau or um, in Colorado or just build it flat here in, in Wisconsin. Uh, there's, there's walkouts, um, you know, there's a lot of different things that you can do. And that really drives the design of the home. Um, how that land's going to lay out. Chris, you've got a real extensive engineering background as well. What if someone wants a walkout wall? Do they need to find a specific piece of land? I, I think it's important that people understand uh, when they're choosing a home that it needs to meet the topography of the land. And, and some of the key features, like a, a zero barrier entry home, you know, if you're in a, a flat landscape, you're probably going to do slab one grade. And, and that can affect your cost of your home. Uh, you know, you could save some money from doing a full basement. Uh, you could maybe add in-floor heat in that, in that scenario when you don't have to put the money into the, the basement. Um, if, if you're looking for a walkout wall, like in Wisconsin, we see a lot of those around the lakes. Uh, it's usually the least expensive uh, square footage to develop in a home. 
So a, a walkout full basement type construction is advantageous for that area, but you're not going to have that opportunity on a flat lot. So you need to understand where your, your uh, key goals or uh, 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 design elements are that you're looking to incorporate into your home, and does it fit that land? Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't, then, then we have some other alternatives we could suggest. You know, if you're not developing lower level space, there's always opportunity to, to develop bonus areas above garages or in large attic areas that would otherwise not be utilized. Yeah. I think what we determined is, is the land is really important. The property is important. So I get that question then, well, do you guys come out and visit the property? And yes, sometimes we can, but a great, uh, great piece of information to have is a topographical survey. And a lot of times a surveyor can do that and have it in a digital format, send it to us, and then we can design the home to fit the property that way as well. Uh, we don't always need to be on the property. Sometimes it's helpful. Um, but we don't always need to be. So that, that is a key piece of information to have is a survey, a topographical survey. If you have a large piece of land or a flat, pretty, uh, pretty simple piece of property, you know, maybe just a plat of survey is important to know those setbacks from the side lots, from the road, from the water, or whatever it may be. So. Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the great things that we do here at Golden Eagles, we can take that topo um, that was provided to us by the customer or builder and what we'll do is we'll put it in a piece of software and we will actually 3D model the topography. And then we will take your home and put it on there so the customer can actually see what it looks like when, they're, when their home, the actual home that they're gonna be buying is sitting on that piece of land. So you may end up uh, running into things where the lot is maybe more steep or more shallow than they had anticipated. We put that model on there and we say, see that you know your walkout maybe isn't going to work as well as you thought you could do a daylight basement right. you know something like that and i think that really gives a lot of value to what we do here because the customer can see you know before they get even get to that building process that okay you know this makes sense here's some suggestions that you can do to to accomplish the goals that you want i think it's a great feature we offer here yeah it might help save them money down the road too because if that if we design a home that doesn't fit the property correctly or made some assumptions like you mentioned I had some clients that said, yeah, this works great for a walkout. Well, we started putting that home on the property and it really didn't make sense. You Absolutely. know, a daylight basement worked better. So now you don't have to over excavate or bring fill in or wherever it may be. So that certainly helps streamline the process and ends up saving them money in the end. Yep, absolutely. And in addition, we always think topography, but soil conditions really dictate a lot too. So <clears throat> when talking budgets and stuff like that, you know, are you building on solid rock? and trying to do a basement that's going to come with different pricing than if you're building in like a real sandy you know soil area so land is very important to know a lot of you know get all the details up front oftentimes when someone is designing a home they have an idea of how they want their feature wall to look and our feature walls are just so impressive what kind of considerations need to be taken into account when designing that so for our feature walls one thing that we do before we even get into the design process is um the design staff will contact the, either the building inspector or one of the officials at the county um, or local municipality, and we will ask building code questions. So all of our homes are not just cookie cutter and, you know, this is what you get. We actually dig down into and we find out what the snow load is going to be, what the wind load is going to be. And that dictates our tall walls, how we engineer it, you know, what kind of material we're going to use. So that feature wall you're referring to will work where you're being, you know, where it's being built. It's not going to be, you know, well, this one isn't going to work for you now. No, we make sure that it does work by calling, you know, the local building official and making sure that we have the right materials and it's designed properly. What about height restrictions? Height restrictions is another big one. Um, we also, in the same breath, we, we call and we ask those questions. We ask the building code, um, snow load, wind load, seismic can be a, play a big factor, um, as well as height restrictions. Um, if you're next to a lake, a lot of times the height restrictions may be lower, um, you know, 30 feet, something like that. That way it's not blocking the view of other people that may be building around, or you may have no building height restrictions, no zoning. Uh, so that's another thing that we take into account. And we also try to suggest things that the customer can do to make sure that they're definitely within, you know, those, those height restrictions that are enforced by the county. So as we're in the design process, they're also getting clients are working with our selections team and doing preliminary cabinet designs. Uh, Deb, will you touch on that a little bit? Yeah, we get the plans from engineering and then Dale, who also is in selections, her and I work on layouts, preliminary ones, um, and then we send a slide deck and also a, a design process showing different 
features about the cabinets, what the cabinet's construction is, and also all these other questions about their plumbing and accessories in their kitchen, um, different rooms like their bathrooms, vanities, um, if they have home bars, if they have offices, and just all these questions that they can think about when they go through this design process slide section. Having you guys involved earlier in the process has been super helpful. Um, just recently, you know, with a client, uh, you know, everybody wants everything in their kitchen, you know, and uh, so we started designing that kitchen or Dale actually was on that project and she started putting all these appliances in there and features that the client wanted and we were just just running out of space. Yeah. You know, so we were able to catch that now sooner in the preliminary design phase. So instead of making her a corner pantry, we actually, you yeah. know, added some square footage, a little bit of square footage to the home to get her the pantry kind of a little bit around the corner, kind of out of that kitchen a little bit, still near the kitchen, but then it just opened up that kitchen. Yeah, I think a lot of times, you know, you gotta have the conversation with the homeowner about how they intend to use their home. You know, and what I mean by that is are are they entertaining people that entertain? Are they people that are inspiring chefs? Uh, they could be a professional chef, some of our mm -hmm. customers. Uh, what exactly do they want to see in their in their kitchens? Maybe there's a need for a butler's pantry. Maybe they are the people that cater a lot of parties, and there needs to be a backspace that isn't going to be seen while they're entertaining that contains that catering mess that comes along right. with that process. So it's it's really, you know, we, we ask a lot of times, we ask the customers, how are you going to use your home in a, like a kitchen setting? but also with windows and people kind of look at us funny, you know, I'm gonna look out the window, but, but there's reasons we're asking that, whether it's a casement operation or awning operation or double hung, what's more convenient for the homeowner, you know, how are they gonna use the house? Yeah, in the long run, you know, asking all these questions up front before like for our part in selections, but before they get to selection. So when we get to selection, it's an easier process and we're not having to redo things again and it makes it easier for the client for sure for sure yeah we want to make sure that we're not saying no to anything so when we do all this proactively and we have right. these conversations we're really adapting that home for exactly what they want mm -hmm. what other things are being selected during that selections process uh we also select the exterior and interior finishes um the plumbing along with all the cabinets Yep. And the finishes, the door styles, the finishes. Interior doors, exterior doors, yes. all that hardware. Mm -hmm. And we're really able to collect all those colors and bring it all together. That right. way they don't need to go around to different places. And Yeah. And yeah. we put them all together. Like we have these selection boards and we put all the finishes together and show the customer. And when they start to see it, then they get really excited to how it's going to look. Yeah, no so. doubt. Having that inspiration board mm -hmm. um, and seeing that your colors look great right, you know together. your finishes your cabinetry color yes. i mean it certainly gives them more confidence in their decisions and yeah like you said they get excited about that yeah. about the the home that they're going to be building mm -hmm. one of my favorite things is the 3d illustrations that we're starting to see mm -hmm. and mike your team has really been putting out some incredible stuff it's just absolutely amazing yeah the customers have absolutely loved it uh you know sometimes uh the customer maybe doesn't quite understand how their roof is going to lay out you know, they, they have a floor plan they love, but maybe they don't quite understand what the roof is going to look like or the elevations. And we provide essentially a 3D model, like I talked about before on the, on the topography, and they can see exactly what their home is like. We can spin it around. Uh, you know, they can see any type of roof lines they want. And, I mean, it's, it's their home that they're going to be living in right there on the computer. It's great. The people have really, really loved it. John, what kind of feedback are you getting from contractors as well as homeowners? Yeah, I was just going to comment, I mean, not just the 3DL <coughs> exterior views, but we're now doing a little bit of interior every once in a while. And um, I was working with a client here recently that she was struggling to visualize how our timber trusses were going to lay out inside the great room and the kitchen and stuff. And we drew up some 3D views for her, and she just instantly fell in love. She's like, that's exactly what I thought it was going to look like. That's so great. Um, same customer, they were doing selections. Right. And on the fly... We were kind of working with the laundry room layout just yesterday, actually. And on the fly, Dayla was able to change the cabinet layouts, 3D mm -hmm. render it right there, and just to see her get all excited. And, you know, she's like, oh, I'm so excited. I can't wait to see it actually get built now. It's fun to see them get, you know, mm -hmm. when they start seeing it come yeah, to I, life. I think that new software, like Mike was talking about, yeah, that really has been even helpful for us in the cabinets, you know, and 
with some of the customers, they just don't visualize like where their these trusses are and how that's going to look. And even Dale working with that new program too, she's does really great with putting those together and having the finishes and it really helps the customer to see what that kitchen is going to look like. Right. You know? Right. They come to us because we're the professional, you know, we, we, we understand all this stuff and sometimes maybe we take it for granted that, you know, we know what this is going to look like the timber truss layout, how the interior vaults are coming together. Like when you have two, uh, you know, an IVS, like two vaults coming together and sometimes the customer doesn't understand that. And with this software, it's their actual home. We can plop a camera in there, take a shot. What would you like to see? Here it is. And it's been a resounding success. I mean, mm-hmm. people have really loved it. And it's it's cleared up a lot of questions that, that they may have had. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can't help but get excited when they keep people come for the selection process and they get some good ideas and, you, and you're, you know, you show a 3D rendering, but really to see it come to life in their home. You know, we got uh, the final episode of the Forever Home coming up. And I'm very excited to see how the natural light spills through that house. Uh, We took in some considerations to let the natural light move through the house from one living space to another living space. We utilized some interior transoms, both with glass and with open framed areas that allow that light to move, as well as the homeowners chose uh, all their doors are eight foot tall, inch and three quarter thick, knotty otter, and they have a three quarter light glass panel in them with the privacy glass. Now, like privacy glass is a very open uh, design, so it allows the light to transfer, but yet still provides the security that, that they're wanting, you know, from a privacy standpoint. And I, I just really looking forward to that series, you know, showing, showing the final home. A few years ago, Chris, you implemented the plan review process, and that's been very helpful and beneficial for our clients. Will you touch on that and how that all works? Sure. During the design process, as the engineering staff gets the preliminary layout done, we, we gather as a group from all, all f- uh, functions, disciplines within the company, from, from uh, kitchens to design to sales to, to even uh, operations and uh, purchasing. And we look over the home and, and look at what areas could be improved. Now, if it's something that the homeowner specifically wanted designed a certain way, We'll still draw it that way for them, but we may provide them two or three options that, that we feel may be a better flow of use of that, that area or um, maybe just areas that they hadn't considered that they could take advantage of. Maybe there's a dead hallway that makes more sense to open it up uh, and just provide them a little more room in a, in a uh, drop zone area or a laundry room or something of that nature. What do you guys all think are some great design trends, some popular ideas that we're seeing incorporated with our new designs? Circling back to like the forever home, the two islands, after they see that and they like the timber lake and then now we see that I've, I'm seeing a lot more customers want to enlarge that kitchen space, add an extra island in there for entertaining. Um, definitely the timber trusses being added as much as it possible out, outside, inside. Yeah, I think the use of exterior spaces as well. Um, you know, covered porches, um, larger garages. Um, you know, some of these homes have just as much a coverage, covered porch square footage in the home as the main living square footage of the home. It's amazing. Um, you know, and that, that all drives costs too. Uh, so some people under, you know, may not quite understand what, why the per square foot cost is, is higher on some of these homes. And, and that's a main reason why is we have extensive covered porches, larger garages on these homes. Um, which extends the living space of that home to not just inside the home, but outside, you know, taking in, um, take advantage of those great views that that customer may have. That's why they're building this home. They, they have some sort of great view that they want to take advantage of. And now they can um, in some outdoor living spaces, you know, extend outside the home. Yeah, I would say uh, one thing that we're seeing more of and that the Forever Home also took advantage of would be hollow core concrete panels. Uh, one brand that we use um, is our generic term would be spancrete. Um, what it is is uh, it's essentially a concrete panel um, that is precast and then it's set in place on top of the foundation. And um, it basically gives you more living area underneath the garage. You know, people never would have thought about that, like utilizing the garage. You know, the garage is the garage, but no, you, you definitely can take advantage of that. Um, what they are is they're precast and they're engineered 
um, for whatever the span may be, whatever the load may be that you're going to have in that garage. And then they're placed on, on top of the foundation. And then there's a, um, you know, you can insulate it like you've shown in the forever home. And then there's a concrete slab that's poured over the top of that. So you still have your garage, drive a truck on it just like you normally would, but you also have storage area underneath that, uh, underneath that garage as well that you could use as uh, you know, another tuck under garage if the lot would allow, um, you could access it from uh, in the basement um, to use as mechanical area. I mean, you know, it's it's endless what you could do with yeah, that. And theater people, rooms. Yeah. I mean, there's no natural light typically down there, so theater right. rooms, whatever it may be. Right. Yeah, there's a lot sure. of great opportunities uh, with that, and it's it's a fantastic you know technology that that people are really starting to use. Yeah, I think it's a great way to add, like you said, that extra space. That uh, you know, if you have a tight lot you know some of these lots that we're building on on mm -hmm. lake properties they try to squeeze as many properties as they can in the lake and there's not a ton of room for extra space you know extra storage space so instead of going out with the home you end up going down or up with the home and expanding the home that way the storage space is that way so that's a great that's a great way to do it for sure right and it's not only just garages you can uh, you don't have to have the entire garage as uh, you know span creator holocor uh, concrete, you could do it just simply above your front porch and have it as like a root cellar, mm -hmm. you know, a smaller mm -hmm. area. Uh, we've also seen them using it in uh, like safe rooms or, you know, storm shelters where it's, uh, there's concrete walls in the basement and then they cap it with concrete as well. And the floor system goes over the top of it. So you've got, uh, you've got a storm shelter down there as well. So there's a lot of different uses that we can do with mm -hmm. that. Deb, over at your office, what kind of design ideas are you seeing that are some of your favorites? Um, right now, like uh, the modern farmhouse is really popular as a design style, um, using a lot of um, the like finishes that are like blacks, grays, whites, um, but incorporating wood also into it. Um, a lot of all these specialized rooms you're having, um, the bars, or you're having theater rooms, or you're having home offices. Um, We've even seen some people with having massage rooms and uh, gyms in their house. So all these different things are incorporated that we're seeing a lot more things for in-houses that you went and saw years ago. I noticed in the, many of the kitchens that you designed that they've got very special range hoods, whether yes. they're wrapped with stone mm -hmm. or, or copper. Or, yeah, we've seen a lot of, uh, we do see a lot of the stone hoods, um, but yeah, copper, um, metal hoods are, are popular with our clients, yeah. So at this point in the process, we've designed the home, we've gone through revisions, mm -hmm. suggestions. It's probably good to get an idea on how much the home is gonna cost. So will you guys walk us through on how that step works? Like Justin mentioned before, we're gonna start with kind of a concept plan of what the customer's looking for, what level of amenities, what kind of finishes they want. We're gonna to put together that ballpark before we even start the, the process. Obviously during the design phase, things change a little bit, you know, um, but once we get the design laid out exactly how they want it, we get all the materials specced out that they're looking for. We then run it through our pricing department to get what we call preliminary pricing, you know, preliminary proposal done. Um, it's really a nice checkpoint, if you will, to kind of say, okay, here's where we're at today. Uh, get numbers from the builders, make sure everything's still in line with where it should be prior to you actually coming in and doing your final selections. That way you have a really good understanding of where the project sits before you come in and start picking the final details out. So we can still make last minute adjustments if we needed, whether it's up or down. Maybe we didn't finish part of the basement right away because we thought we were gonna be over budget, but now we actually came in under budget, so now we can finish the rest of the basement. Or maybe we gotta cut something out just because the house grew a little bit more over the course of the design, and now we gotta trim somewhere. So they're very solid preliminary numbers, mm -hmm. numbers that are oftentimes driven like those selections allowances for cabinets. There have already been conversations with Dale and Deb. So if those conversations are driving uh, certain factors that would increase the price, we're able to increase the allowance so that we've got a better idea of the grand scope of where this home is, is coming in. But of course, we'll get the actual true numbers once they start designing with, with the selections team. Right. What's nice with our system, and I think we've commented on it several times, is before you even sign the contract, you do have the real number. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do the preliminary proposal with allowances built in still to kind of say, okay, here's where we're at. You're going to come in, do your final selections. Those allowances are then removed, real numbers inserted, and now here's your contract where other companies and other ways you might build, you might 
never pick out your cabinetry until you've already dug the hole, you've already started construction. Then the builder says, okay, now go pick out your cabinets, go pick out your doors. Now you go do it, you come back to him and say, well, here's what I selected. And he goes, okay, well, you're 20, 30 grand over what I had allocated in there for an allowance. So now the cost of your house just went up that much, but it's too late, you've already started construction. Mm -hmm. Where with our system, all that allowance, all those numbers are removed and you're dealing with real numbers before you even sign the contract with us. That's such a great perspective, John. And I think that's how a lot of people find themselves over budget when they're under construction because they don't have a lot of answers yet. Mm -hmm. And they just enter into uh, that construction phase with the, the faith and the hope that it's all going to work out. Mm -hmm. So for us, we're very detailed. We like to make sure all the T's are crossed, I's are dotted, and we're getting a lot of information before a nail is ever pounded, before excavation even starts. Mike, will you touch base on the engineering process? Yeah, absolutely. So um, before um, you know, you sign the contract or everything, we're, we can pr we'll provide a full set of construction documents. So that means you're going to have architectural drawings, uh, which is essentially the basic five, like we like to say, you know, the elevations, the foundation, floor plan that have, you know, room sizes on it, but it doesn't necessarily have the, the headers on it. You know, uh, any column sizing. Uh, you know the real nuts and bolts of what the builder is going to need to construct it. So you're going to have the set of architecturals. You're also going to have a set of structure drawings. Now that's where we strip off all the cabinetry, um, you know, all the, the room names and everything. And the only thing you're going to see on there is what the builder needs as far as dimensions, um, what the materials are, um, you know, how the plan he needs to build the home. So you're going to have that, the structure, and then you're also going to have details as well. And the details correlate to the architectural pages um, that show how the, the log is applied. Um, screw patterns, how trim is applied, um, you know, any, any, and any and all things you can think of to that home. You know, if there's something different, there's going to be a detail about it. Um, one thing that I hear often from builders, um, you know, if they call in is just how well thought out and detailed our plans are. Um, more often than not, we don't have questions because they are so detailed. Um, everything is spelled out on how it's put together. Uh, another great thing that we offer here at Golden Eagle is if your municipality does require the plan stamped by a professional engineer, we work with a professional engineer that has a stamp in all 50 states and Canada. So essentially there is no state, municipality, anything that Golden Eagle can't handle because um, we have you know the staff and uh, the resources to do it. And it's nice to know that all of our details are in a 3D image and can be exploded if a customer has a question, as well as we offer a builder portal so the builder can upload his drawings right to his to his job site doesn't have to worry about getting him ups or whatever out to him uh, it also is, is there for the homeowner as well as we could guide them to maybe one of our videos on our website if there's a question that still lingers to show them exactly how the application is happening and and if it's a one-off odd deal maybe we can burn a video quick to show them exactly what we're talking about and get it to them and Justin, all this happens before final pricing, right? So that there are no surprises? Correct, correct. Yeah, typically we like to have the engineering done so that we can price it accordingly. So, you know, if the engineer needs to add some hangers or brackets to it, um, more screws, a tighter screw pattern, whatever it may be because of the snow or wind load, you know, that can all be incorporated into the final pricing. So there's no surprises, exactly. And then usually what happens next? Engineered plans are done. Where do we go after that? Yep. So engineered plans are done. You're receiving a final contract. You know, your price is that that's your price unless you change things, which you certainly you certainly can. If, if none of the products have been ordered, there's some opportunity to change. But, you know, that's your final contract. And that's where you're going to sign and place a deposit down. Um, right now, the deposit deposits are 20 percent down. Um, and that's going to trigger us to start ordering material, um, start milling your home, start manufacturing it um, and uh, you know, typically, you know, we can typically get that first load in, out in about six to eight weeks. So it goes really fast after, you know, you place a deposit. We do a lot of this work up front so that on the back end, boom, things happen very quickly then. And that 20% deposit is just on the materials. Just on materials, correct. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. And how does the shipping process work? So, yep. John, how about you touch on that? You used to manage the shipping department many years ago. Yeah. <clears throat> so like Justin said, once the deposit's put down, then we start milling the process. Um, Scott in our shipping department does an excellent job. You know, he'll reach out to the builder right away, usually to say, what kind of timeline are you looking at? Just so he puts down his radar. Um, we don't mill the log till we know you're getting ready to, 
to take delivery. You know, we give you nine months to take that first delivery after you put the deposit. So it's not like as soon as you sign it, we're shipping it to you. Um, we understand that you're gonna have to dig the basement, you know, do all that kind of stuff. So we're getting all that material ready. Our shipping department coordinates with the builder. How big's the lot? How much material do you want? Some guys say, give me one delivery. I just want to get the floor system down. And then a week later, bring out the framing or the log, depending on what style home it is. Other guys might say, we've got plenty of room out here and I've got a big crew and we plan on going. So bring out up to the roof. I want two, three deliveries right away so that we have all the material there. Um, so Scott will work out with, with the builder exactly what he wants, what kind of time frame he wants. And then we don't order like your windows, stuff like that, until the builder and homeowner sign off on it and say that they haven't made any changes to the plans. So they'll sign off on that. And then as the builder is ready for materials, we'll just kind of stagger those deliveries and bring them out to them so that all that stuff's not just sitting on the site. Yeah, and what's nice is at Golden Eagle, we provide a comprehensive bill of material. And all of the material are, is broken down on that list by heading type. So we're not going to deliver you 1,200 studs in one shot. We're going to deliver the heading types that you asked for. So if you, if you really want only the lower level bearing walls, and like John said, maybe the first floor floor system, the exterior bearing walkout walls, that, those headings are what is gathered for that load that's coming out for the first load. You don't have all the studs that are in the house that are going to sit out there and get exposed to weather. So it, it's, it's a cleaner job site. It's a more secure job site. It's just an a, a awesome system. And what kind of locations are we seeing these trucks get delivered to? All over the lower 48, Alaska and Canada. There's, there's really nothing that limits us from getting to a job site. Not even water. We had to ship, uh, we, had to, <laughs> yeah. we had to put some rough trusses on a barge recently we, we and, barged and one ship across, across the lake. lake. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Now, what happens when the house is under construction and the contractors on site have questions? There's a builder hotline. Mike, how does that usually go? So with the builder hotline, um, the builder can call in with any questions he may have. 99% um, of the time, um, it is on the print. We've, it, it, they're so detailed, they maybe just overlook it. Um, so the best thing I tell them is always make sure that they're reviewing their plans you know, prior to construction. That, that's huge, um, is even before they drive a nail review those plans thoroughly, review those details. Because like I said, more often than not, um, you know, the, the answer is in the prints there. But let's say you can't find it, more than welcome to call into, uh, you know, the builder hotline and they'll get um, uh, Scott or myself or one of the other designers and we will help you through it. And if it's something that we uh, need to contact the, uh, uh, let's say the trust manufacturer, they have a question on the trusses, you know, we'll dig into that for them. Uh, and, and get the information they need. And yeah, it's, it's been great. And it's all the builders are very receptive to it because they can get, you know, an answer when they need it and they don't have to, you know, wait on anybody or just sit there and try and figure it out themselves. If we were to rewind back a little bit, right after engineered plans, there's an opportunity for the contractors to come in and do a plan review. And they walk through that with, uh, with Chris generally Correct. or yourself. Uh, Chris, will you touch on what the plan review process looks like? Yeah. Once, once the home is completed in final engineering, the homeowner can come if they're using a builder that has built multiple homes with us before just so that their knowledge is brought up. Or it could be a new builder that's first time building a home. They come in, we sit down, and we go through, you know, a, roughly a 32-page large-scale documents of, of all the drawings. We talk about uh, all the, the tie-downs that are needed in the foundation. We talk about uh, if there's some kind of... Uh, linear beam connection from the foundation to the framework. Uh, we, we go through and look at the tall wall framing. So we go through the entire set of plans. We even go through every detail that is the 3D detail that I talked about earlier that's in the floor plan. We talk about where the bubbles are and it, where this detail applies to the home. And if they don't understand the detail, we have the opportunity to go out into our manufacturing facility and we have some mock-ups of walls and we have mock-ups of corners so we can show them exactly how we were intending for it to go together. Uh, a lot of times if, if they're new to full log construction or maybe they, they, they've done button pass corners but haven't done dovetail corners, we can walk out there and show them the actual how the corners configure, what kind of material or, or equipment is needed to cut them appropriately to make, make their use of their time the best that it can be on the job site. So it's very extensive. It, I, I've done them as, you know, if it's, if it's a, a half log or, or a exposed beam house, it, it might only be four to six hours. 
We've also done it where it took two days to go through a set of drawings with a homeowner. It just depends on how detailed they want to be and what their knowledge base is. 99% of what we build is a custom home. Uh, you know, we tell our customers, don't, don't worry about necessarily how the floor plan is going to come together immediately. Give us ideas of what your master suite, if you saw a master suite at your friend's house, take a photograph of it. If you saw a master suite in, in, in Country Living, pull the page out of the, the magazine. If you like one of our, our uh, theater rooms from the Forever Home, let us know that. We will take those floor plans and incorporate them. Just give us an idea of, of what your, your trend or your taste is, whether mm -hmm. it's a farmhouse or whether you want a story and a half or whether you want a traditional log home. Give us some clues to what your, your end project is and we'll customize a house for you and, and hopefully you know, hit the nail on the head. Yeah, I think there's really two two clients. You know, there's two types of clients. There's there's one that likes seeing the floor plan and seeing the home completed because they they can kind of visualize it better and know what it's going to look like. And then there's some people that come with just just a clean slate, like you were saying, Chris. Hey, this is these are my thoughts. These are my ideas. I like this. I like that. And then we literally just start putting those together. Start putting those ideas together. And, and Mike and his team do a great job of that, um, taking the customer's envision and making it come to life. Yeah, um, to touch on like what Chris said, um, me and Colin actually just had a Zoom meeting with the client the other day, um, <clears throat> and that was just exactly what they did. They came, they're like, we like a lot of what you guys have, but we want this to be a truly unique home. It's our forever home. It's, you know, we want one of a kind. So I'm like, okay, let's set up a Zoom meeting, put together a list of what your wants are, your needs are, maybe some kind of rough idea of how big you think you want the rooms to be. And we set up a Zoom meeting. We actually brought up Google Earth looked around their property the guy's like okay let you know right here's where i'm thinking i want it this is a little bit of an elevation so colin's taking notes saying you know which side he thinks the garage should be on we asked him where's your views where's the sunset the sun rises what are you trying to achieve um the the, the guy said you know i'm a real light sleeper so i need my bedroom as far away from the living area as possible so colin did all these notes and we came back to the customer with Here's kind of a general concept. Here's an option that we also did on the side. And now we're just kind of going through some of those revisions and playing with that layout. But it's going to be a truly unique, one-of-a-kind home that just started with, you know, I want a kitchen this size with this, you know, back to what Dale, or Deb said, I want a kitchen this size with these appliances, kind of room for these appliances. So Colin was able to put blocks in and kind of figure out roughly what size we needed. Um, like Chris said, how are you going to utilize the home? We kind of just went over all that stuff and we're working on a truly custom design for them. Yeah, Dale and I do the same thing with the, like all the layouts for the kitchens and stuff. When we do the preliminary, like before we were talking about that, um, we also send out a slide deck that has all these questions like, how do you want to, what are the words that, uh, how do you make one have your house make you feel? Is it warm? Is it cozy? Is it more modern? Is it, um, and it has a whole whole list of things that they can think about and go through those and question themselves on the type of appliances they want, um, the type of tub or the sinks or the faucet styles they want. They, there's all these things that, all these options that customers don't really know there's are out there. So we try to get them to give us that feedback before they come for final selection. So we have an idea of what they want this house to feel like or look like. And we encourage them to send us pictures off their Pinterest or they find on the internet anywhere, you know, send us your ideas on how you want this pantry to look or how do you want your kitchen to look, your bar area to look. That just helps us in so much more in advance. If we get these things, we can fine tune your um, kitchens or your baths or whatever room um, before you even get here. So, Yeah, a good example would be what John just spoke about, the customer that said he's a light sleeper. Maybe that would be an ideal customer for Pella's lifestyle windows, triple pane that has the fa fashion uh, blind inside the glass. Mm -hmm. And he could do, uh, you know, room darkening shades uh, that are automated. And actually, you actually see some of that in the up and coming episode of the, the Forever Home. They have some room darkening shades. They have some just some uh, cellular type shades that, that uh, just diffuse some light. And they have them automated so banks of blinds work together opposed to one one working by itself so it's they're totally customizable and that would probably be an ideal opportunity for that customer yeah, for sure. 
the lighting in that home is absolutely incredible. There are so many lights, not only up lighting timbers, but also just indirect and ambient light that you might not be sure which light switch to use. So what's pretty cool about that home is that they are triggered oftentimes by motion. So when you're walking down this beautiful hallway, all the lights come on. And it's, it's really impressive. I would say the lighting is one of my favorite things in the forever home. And we've got that final walkthrough coming up pretty soon for that we home, do. don't we? We do. Yeah. So, John, what are some of your favorite things? Name, I was just going to say, as long as we're together. We'll go around the table. I was going to say, as long as we're together, why don't we? Because I, I geek out over lighting. I just I just absolutely love that. So I'll, I'll, I'll claim that one. Okay. My, my big thing with that house is just all the timber trusses that they put in there and that outdoor Solana. I think that's amazing i mean it touches on like what justin said a lot of customers are looking for outdoor living um i i think that space is pretty pretty spectacular okay i wrote down some square footages john on that home because it's amazing um how many okay so the the square footage of the covered porches in there including the solana you just mentioned 3400 square feet of covered porches in that home it's bigger than, <laughs> bigger than most houses yeah, it's, it is. the first floor square footage is 3600 <laughs> by itself so the total design square footage in that home is 14,400 and, and it comes across most people will come across that and say that that's a 3,600 square foot home and th that's way more than that I mean the garage is over 2,400 square feet in itself wow. with that's with 15 foot sidewalls right yeah yeah you, you can play basketball in the garage I mean <laughs> <laughs> how many other people can do that <laughs> yeah I mean that that's one of my favorite favorite features of that home is the garage just like I mentioned the the, the sheer size of it um I geek out over garages like you geek out over elect electrical yeah. but um i mean you can do with the heated floors in there the epoxy floors the drains in there um you know the maintenance free finishes in there so i mean if you need to clean something wash something in there it's you can and not have to worry about the finishes on there that 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 was my favorite part <laughs> i really love the theater room um when you walk in i mean it feels like a movie theater inside the home it's it's got the tiered seating it has you know you know a, a small stage uh, where the you know projector or uh, television is going to be, it's got a little bar area, food, snacks. I mean, you could spend an entire day in there. It's it's fantastic, it, and it's beautifully done. You know, with with beam work and everything, it's it's fantastic. And the chairs look really comfortable too. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's going to sound weird, but I love the powder room. The powder room that house is a statement piece, uh, not only from the the vanity setup where it's multi level. Uh, it's just very open and roomy. Uh, they have a tile backsplash that, that complements the, the uh, solid surface countertops. There's a, there's a freestanding tub in the uh, powder room that has a mosaic tile floor around it that has two filler spouts for it, a fireplace over top of the tub, <laughs> and a transom letting light in. I mean, if that's not a statement piece, nothing is. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, that should be a, a, a point of topic of conversation in that house every time somebody visits. It's beautiful. And I guess I would say, since I'm in selections and cabinets, um, all of the cabinetry is beautiful in this house um, because it's all custom designed. Um, we were working with, we worked with the client, and it, everything was so detailed and specific. And the kitchen really is a statement piece. Um, it has two large islands. You know, there's um, the kitchen is so grand because of the high ceilings and the beams. It just when you walk in there, it's grand looking um, with the lighting and everything. And also with the wall of the appliances, the big 72 inch refrigerator, the four ovens, everything in the cabinetry design, I think is just beautiful in this house. Yeah, the changes in the depths, mm -hmm. I mean, and then it's just accentuated by when they put the countertops on. You see all those changes in the depths of the of the cabinetry, yeah. um, even more so. Everything was designed with such detail on the location of different things in the kitchen, of where they wanted these cabinets placed, because they do a lot of entertaining, a lot of cooking and stuff. So everything was placed strategically, um, even in the ba the bathrooms and stuff, um, you know, the design of the vanities and what they wanted. Everything is just so detailed and just beautiful. I like the whole house, I mean, all the way to the, like, the roof design. When you first see the house, just the curb appeal, what you guys did with all the different overhangs and stuff like that, you know, I mean, nothing wasn't thought of with the home. Yep. The mm -hmm. customer did give us a lot of free reign, so that was great. So you guys were really able to yeah. dress up that exterior and really go above and beyond, I think, just from a curb appeal, you know, that most people wouldn't even think about. 
Yeah, yeah I, I think it'd be hard to pick one feature as your favorite when you really mm -hmm. think about it. Because when you look at that home, every time you turn into a different living area, there's another feature that blows your mind, like mm -hmm. that yeah. AccuCraft fireplace. Mm -hmm. The thing stands over six foot tall, and it's two-sided, so it, it's accessible from the Solana area and the living room. You know, yeah. it's yeah. that's just just gorgeous. Yeah. And just mm -hmm. the craftsmanship that go, you know, watching some of those videos and just appreciating all the craftsmanship that goes into building this types of home. Um, you know, when they were putting together those timber stairs, it just just looking at all the intricate cuts and the detail work and putting the spindles in, um, pre-staining the materials before it went in, and just all the all the steps they had to think of and to, and then seeing it come to life. I just appreciated the craftsmanship that that went into that home. Right, the the real stone that Kafka granite provided, uh, you know, the 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 fireplace in the master bedroom has a solid granite Man mantle yeah. that was over like I, th I think it was like six hundred pounds. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's unreal. It it's just beautiful. Every time, like I said, every room you go into, there's something else to see. There's something else that impresses you. Yeah. Uh, when the video comes out, you're going to be spending some time forward, backwards, looking back at, you know, moving it back and forth to see to see what the, your favorite feature is. I know, I know it's hard to pick one out when I when I see it. I think that's a great way to summarize it. We can name a few of our favorites right now, but there are easily ten times as many great ideas out there that the viewers are going to really enjoy. I was just out there, and we're getting ready for the final walkthrough tour, and I was blown away. And I've been out to that home so many times in the past. It's just absolutely amazing. So we're looking forward to releasing that. That'll probably be coming out within the next three to four weeks. Yeah, if the, if you know if the, if the viewers are dog lovers, there's something in this house for you as well. Yeah. well there are plenty of surprises. That's yeah. for sure. Well, I think it was great that we reviewed the process, how these incredible homes come to be. We feature so many beautiful homes all over the country, and you know they all start with different intentions, different goals for how they want the home to be, uh, what they want it to mean to them. A lot of our clients want these to be legacy homes. Others may use it solely for entertaining. Um, others, they may be downsizing from what's currently a very large home to a more normal size home up in the mountains. And it's just about supporting that lifestyle for them. So it's a wonderful opportunity to be able to do all these behind the scenes walk through tours. But I think what is even just more special is how it all comes to be. Uh, the process that we go through, diving into all the details, when you look at those 3D elevations and renderings that your team put out before the home was even built, mm -hmm. look at how close that home came to matching. Absolutely. Those yeah. elevations, those those renderings. Yep, you look at, at the, you know, when they see the real picture and look back at what the renderings were, I mean, that, that shows right there that, you know, what the customer sees when they come here to Golden Eagle will be what they get in the, in the end. Yeah. And when it comes to a big project like this, it's nice to have that predictability and that assurance that you know what you're getting yourself into. Yeah. I think that's another huge benefit of Golden Eagle is that just the experience that, that you have behind every design and every plan that goes into your home, like that plan review. I mean, everybody is putting their, you know, their input into that, their blood, sweat and tears into that home um, to make it extra special. That's definitely one one of the, the huge benefits of Golden Eagle is having all that experience, all that background, um, all that information pouring into each and every plan that we put out. Oftentimes we're leveraging industry experts, which is why we are proud to announce that we have a brand new podcast coming out. It's called The New Home Show. For those of you that have enjoyed today's podcast review, I want you to go and look at your favorite listening platforms, search for that new home show. We'll be bringing on industry experts and we'll be going behind the scenes on these great ideas that make these brand new homes one of a kind. So until then, uh, please check out our other videos and stay tuned for that upcoming tour of the Forever Home.